with sad news, and that is that Herman Cain, a uh, longtime businessman, former mm -hmm. CEO of Godfather Pizza, and of course, a Republican presidential candidate in 2012, in the 2012 race, has died at the age of 74. As I mentioned death. amid all of this news on the coronavirus, we learned of the death of Herman Cain from complications of COVID-19. Sadly bringing you this breaking news on Herman Cain. We are just getting uh, word that he has passed away due to coronavirus complications. We know that he had been hospitalized after he was diagnosed with COVID-19. The former Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel Trending the Web. I am your host for the day and my name is Sally. Today is indeed a very sad day as Herman Cain, an American business executive, a syndicated columnist, and a Tea Party activist has passed away from complication of COVID-19. In today's video we will see who was Herman Cain, so stay tuned. Oh, by the way if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, please consider subscribing and do not forget to press the bell icon to get notifications whenever a new video is published. We generally try to publish videos regularly on tending topics from the web world. Herman Cain was an American business executive, a syndicated columnist, and a Tea Party activist. Cain grew up in Georgia and graduated from Morehouse College with a bachelor's degree in mathematics. He then earned a master's degree in computer science at Purdue University, while also working full-time for the U.S. Department of the Navy. In 1977, he joined the Pillsbury Company where he later became vice president. During the 1980s, Kane's success as a business executive at Burger King prompted Pillsbury to appoint him as chairman and CEO of Godfather's Pizza, in which capacity he served from 1986 to 1996. Kane was chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City Omaha branch from 1989 to 1991. He was deputy chairman, from 1992 to 1994, and then chairman until 1996, of the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City. In 1995, he was appointed to the Kemp Commission, and in 1996, he served as a senior economic advisor to Bob Dole's presidential campaign. From 1996 to 1999, Kane served as president and CEO of the National Restaurant Association. In May 2011, Kane announced his 2012 presidential candidacy. By the fall, his proposed 999 tax plan and debating performances had made him a serious contender for the Republican nomination. In November, however, his campaign faced allegations of sexual misconduct, denied by Kane. He announced suspension of his campaign on December 3. He remained involved in politics afterwards. In the 2020 election cycle, Kane was a co-chairman of Black Voices for Trump. Early Life of Kane Herman was born on December 13, 1945, in Memphis, Tennessee, to Lenora Davis Kane, a cleaning woman and domestic worker, and Luther Kane who was raised on a farm and worked as a barber and janitor, as well as a chauffeur for the Coca-Cola Company President Robert W. Woodruff. Kane said that as he was growing up, his family was poor but happy. Kane related that his mother taught him about her belief that success was not a function of what you start out with materially, but what you start out with spiritually. His father worked three jobs to own his own home, something he achieved during Kane's childhood, and to see his two sons graduate. Kane grew up on the west side of Atlanta, attending school and the Reverend Cameron M. Alexander's Antioch Baptist Church North in the neighborhood now known as the Bluff. Eventually Kane's father saved enough money and the family moved to a modest brick home on Albert Street in the Collier Heights neighborhood. He attended S.H. Archer High School, graduating in 1963. Education and Career of Kane In 1967, Kane graduated from Morehouse College with a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics. In 1971, he received a Master of Science in Computer Science from Purdue University, while working full-time as a ballistics analyst for the U.S. Department of the Navy as a civilian. After completing his master's degree from Purdue, Kane left the Department of the Navy and began working for the Coca-Cola Company in Atlanta as a computer systems analyst. In 1977, he moved to Minneapolis to join Pillsbury soon becoming Director of Business Analysis in its Restaurant and Foods Group in 1978. Kane's work at Burger King and Godfather's Pizza. At age 36, Kane was assigned in the 1980s to analyze and manage 400 Burger King stores in the Philadelphia area. At the time, Burger King was a Pillsbury subsidiary. 
Under Kane, his region posted strong improvement in three years. According to a 1987 account in the Minneapolis Star Tribune, Pillsbury's then-president Wynne Wallen said, he was an excellent bet. Herman always seemed to have his act together. At Burger King, Kane established the Beamer program, which taught our employees, mostly teenagers, how to make our patrons smile by smiling themselves. It was a success, within three months of the program's initiation, the sales trend was moving steadily higher. Kane's success at Burger King prompted Pillsbury to appoint him president and CEO of another subsidiary, Godfather's Pizza. On his arrival on April 1, 1986, Kane told employees, I'm Herman Kane and this ain't no April Fool's joke. We are not dead. Our objective is to prove to Pillsbury and everyone else that we will survive. Godfather's Pizza was performing poorly, having slipped in ranks of pizza chains from third in 1985 to fifth in 1988. Under Kane's leadership, Godfather's closed approximately 200 restaurants and eliminated several thousand jobs, and by doing so returned to profitability. In a leveraged buyout in 1988, Kane, Executive Vice President and COO Ronald B. Gartland, and a group of investors bought Godfather's from Pillsbury. Kane's work in the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City and National Restaurant Association. Kane served as chairman of the board of the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City Omaha branch from January 1, 1989, to December 31, 1991. He became a member of the board of directors of the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City in 1992. He served as deputy chairman from January 1, 1992, to December 31, 1994 and then as its chairman until August 19, 1996, when he re-signed to become active in national politics. Kane left Godfather's Pizza in 1996 and moved to the District of Columbia, from 1996 to 1999 he served as CEO of the National Restaurant Association, a trade group and lobbying organization for the restaurant industry, on whose board of directors he had previously served. Kane's lobbying work for the association led to a number of connections to Republican lawmakers and politicians. Under Kane's leadership, the association lobbied against increases to the minimum wage, mandatory health care benefits, regulations against smoking, and lowering the blood alcohol limit that determines whether one is driving under the influence. Kane was on the board of directors of Aquila Incorporated, Nabisco, Whirlpool, Reader's Digest, and Aggo Incorporated. After Kane's term with the restaurant advocacy group ended in 1999, he returned to Omaha for about a year then moved to his hometown of Atlanta in 2000. Kane's work in media. Kane wrote a syndicated op-ed column, which was distributed by the North Star Writers Group. Kane appeared in the 2009 documentary An Inconvenient Tax. From 2008 until February 2011, Kane hosted the Herman Kane Show on Atlanta talk radio station WSB. On January 19, 2012, Kane began working for WSB again by providing daily commentaries, while occasionally filling in for Eric Erickson and Neil Bortz. On October 1, 2012, Kane began writing weekly online columns for the media organization Newsmax, in a series titled 999 to Save America. Kane took over Bortz's radio talk show on January 21, 2013, upon Bortz's retirement. The show was dropped from the Westwood One Radio Network in December 2016 in favor of The Chris Plant Show, but continued to air in limited syndication through WSB's owner, Cox Radio. On February 15, 2013, Fox News Channel announced Kane would join the network as a contributor. In March 2019, Kane was a panelist on a Waters World episode. Recognitions for Kane Kane received the 1996 Horatio Alger Award and was bestowed with honorary degrees from Creighton University, Johnson & Amp, Wales University, Morehouse College, the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, the New York City College of Technology, Purdue University, Suffolk University, and Tugela College. Then Fatmer Secretary of Housing and Urban Development Jack Kemp referred to Kane as the Colin Powell of American capitalism. Kemp stated that Kane's conquests won't be counted in terms of countries liberated or lives saved, but in those things that make life worth living, expanding opportunity, creating jobs and broadening horizons, not just for those he knows, but through his example, for those he'll never meet. Possible nomination to the Federal Reserve Board. 
On April 4, 2019, President Donald Trump said that he intended to nominate Kane to the second of the two vacant seats on the Federal Reserve Board. Assessing the possible nomination, news publications reviewed Kane's sexual misconduct allegations that preceded his withdrawal from the 2012 presidential election. Kane acknowledged that the nomination process would be more cumbersome for him due to his unusual career. He initially stated that he was not considering withdrawing his name from consideration for the seat. After it appeared likely that he would not receive enough votes to support his confirmation, Kane withdrew on April 22, 2019. Black Voices for Trump In the 2020 election cycle, Kane was a co-chairman of Black Voices for Trump. Some other highlights of Kane's political career was 1. In 1994, as president-elect of the National Restaurant Association, Kane challenged President Bill Clinton on the costs of the employer mandate contained within the Health Security Act and criticized the effect on small businesses. 2. He acted as the senior advisor to 1996 Dole campaign. 3. Kane briefly ran for the Republican presidential nomination in 2000. 4. In 2004 Kane ran for the U.S. Senate in Georgia and did not win in the primaries. 5. Starting in 2005, Kane worked for the political advocacy group Americans for Prosperity, AFP, alongside Mark Block. 6. A Tea Party activist, Kane addressed numerous Tea Party rallies in 2010. Following the 2010 midterm elections, Kane announced his intentions to run for president in December 2010 stating that there was a 70% chance that he would attempt to seek the office. 7. Kane's addresses to conservative groups were well received, and in late September and early October 2011, Kane won the straw polls of the Florida Republican Party, DCON, and the National Federation of Republican Women's Convention. 8. In July 2011, an advisor suggested that his campaign's tax policy plan be called the Optimal Tax, but Kane rejected the name, saying we're just going to call it what it is, 999 plan. 9. On January 4, 2012, Kane announced the Kane Solutions Revolution. Kane's stated goal was to get commitments from members of Congress to support the 999 plan before the 2012 elections. 10. Although Mitt Romney was endorsed by Kane on May 15, 2012, he would eventually lose the general election to President Obama. Personal Life Kane married Gloria Etchison of Atlanta, soon after her graduation from Morris Brown College in 1968. The couple had two children, Melanie and Vincent, and Kane had four grandchildren at the time of his death. Kane died on July 30, 2020, from complications of COVID-19. May you rest in peace Mr. Herman Kane. Thanks for watching today. If you liked the video then please consider subscribing and also press the bell icon to get a notification whenever a new video is published. Also if you have liked this video, please like, comment and share it as much as possible. So until next time, take care and goodbye.